Now the first stack that I'm going to be doing in Popper that I'm going to be showing off on stream now is mono black control. So it's not really control, all things considered. It's not really control. Um, it's more of a mid range deck, um, but it's it's broken up into sort of three main three main parts, um, three or four main parts in the in the deck. But basically, it is essentially the jund of Popper. So like if you play modern. Uh, if you play modern, you will know Jund. Um, Jund is just the mid-range deck. Um, it's just always been around. Um, at some points, it's been more relevant than others. Uh, it comes and goes. It sort of fluctuates with the metagame. That is an awful lot like Mono Black Control. Um, it plays a mid-range mid game, and it looks to disrupt the opponent in a similar way that uh, Jund does, and it can also close out a game reasonably quickly if it needs to, um, with the right draws. But it has card advantage, it has loads of removal. It's probably the highest amount of removal in probably any deck in the format, I would argue. Um, and it also has, like I said, there are many different options, particularly in black, um, <coughs> even at the common level, to have good disruption. Um, so what I'll do is I'll run through all the different pieces here now and the reasonings um, behind all of the, the pieces that go to, that come together to make this deck happen, make this deck work. So. Like I said, similar to Jund in Modern, um, this has hand disruption. This has ways in which to get cards out of your opponent's hand that you might not be able to deal with or to, to, to slow down their clock or whichever it may be. Uh, so main deck, we have two Duress. So it's one black mana, sorcery, target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, not a land card from it, and that player discards that card. So nice little catch-all. Now granted, you might be thinking, well, there's there's a lot of creatures in Popper, and that is true. There is a lot of creatures, but with the amount of removal that we have, we won't really need to worry too much about creatures, to be honest. Um, so Duress tends to be a bit of a better option at the moment. Uh, then after that, we have Chittering Rats. Now, this is something that people in Cube might have seen, um, or people that have played Popper before. But other than that, you probably haven't really seen this card. It's one black black for a 2-2 two -two rat. And when it enters the battlefield, target opponent puts a card from their hand on top of their library. So it's not quite discarding it, but you are essentially denying them a full draw step, which is incredible. It's so powerful. It doesn't seem like it's all that good with, you know, just a three mana two two that delays them getting a getting a card in their hand. It's so, so strong. It's so powerful. It allows you to pull ahead. You're committing to the board while you're also preventing them from committing harder. Um, so it's very very powerful uh, when you pair a lot of the creatures in this deck with the next card you'll realize the the power that's that's behind this and that is one okiba gang shinobi so this doesn't always see main deck play sometimes this is relegated to the sideboard sometimes it's not even there at all but at the moment there are a lot of decks where the most important thing is card advantage so okiba gang shinobi is a five mana three two which seems like a terrible rate but it has ninjutsu for three and a black so for four mana uh, you can return an unblocked for four mana and return an unblocked attacker you control to your hand to put this card onto the battlefield from your hand tapped and attacking and when it deals combat damage to a player they discard two cards now the reason that this works so well with all of our other creatures is because all of our other creatures have entered the battlefield effect so you basically return them to your hand so you can play them again and as reward for doing that you also get to make your opponent discard cards so it's quite nice overall this is our disruption package. Uh, when it comes to the removal, we have some very, very good removal at the common level. Uh, we have four defile here, one black for an instant. Target creature gets minus one, minus one until end of turn for each swamp you control. We're mono black, so that's not that big of a deal. Uh, we have four chainers edict, one and a black for a sorcery. Target player sacrifices a creature, so it's your standard edict effect. But it has flashback five black black. So you can cast it from your graveyard for seven mana, which doesn't seem like it's going to be all that relevant, but Popper is a slow and quite grindy format, so you will find yourself actually casting uh, Flashing Back Chainer's Edict. Uh, we then have two Kumbaj Witches, which is a weird one. It's black black for a 1-3 human wizard, and you can tap them to have Kumbaj Witches deal one damage to any target and one damage to any target of an opponent's choice. So what happens is you tap it, you deal one damage to something, and then they get to choose to deal one damage to something afterwards, uh, which is a bit weird, but it can be quite relevant, um, uh, particularly against um, decks like Elves, um, or anything with one toughness um, is 
falls to this uh, card quite hard. Uh, it can also block for um, as if it had two power. So you can block with a Kumbaj Witches, and then before damage, you can tap it and deal one damage to the creature that it's blocking. And so it counts as an additional point of damage, which is quite nice. Um, and then after that, we have got two Victim of Night. So black, black for an instant. Destroy target non-vampire, non-werewolf, non-zombie creature. So the only matchup where this is really relevant is sometimes mono green stompy because sometimes they run um i think they have a werewolf in there somewhere it might just be a wolf though um and then there is a zombies deck but it's like tier five so if you're paired up against it the least of your concerns will be um, oh my victim of night doesn't hit any other creatures it's that you have a strictly better deck um so that's that's pretty good next up we've got crypt rats two and a black um for a one one which seems god awful but it is one of the best sweepers in the format you can pay X to have Crypt Rats deal X damage to each creature and each player, but you can only spend black mana on X. Now, if you haven't noticed, we've got only got black mana. Nothing but black, so that's good. Um, this can be incredible. You can play this out on one turn and then pay one into it to deal one damage to everything, so that's four mana for one damage. It's not that great, but it's, its flexibility is what makes it good here. You can play this, and then next turn, you can pump... 10 mana into it if you have it available and actually just kill your opponent because it deals damage to each player as well uh, which is quite nice uh, this is also another a nice way to take care of multiple creatures um uh, ones like multiple larger creatures like three or four toughness maybe uh, and then finally we've won tendrils of corruption i quite like this because burn is a bit of a thing um you can get long game where you start grinding it out and your opponent drops a gurma gangler and you need a nice way to be able to cleanly take care of it and um, while buffling buffing your own um your own life totals and that kind of thing so um but yeah the uh sorry there i'm just trying to take care of something over in the chat here um but yes so tendrils of corruption is quite handy uh then we have our card advantage um side of the deck um where we are able to leverage our card advantage and our card quality to be able to get ahead of our opponent that we've now disrupted and removed all their stuff um, so this is one that i'm actually trying out this is normally in uh, omen of the dead this is one i'm talking about here it's normally unearth because a lot of our creatures are three cmc or lower um but this one adds uh, additional devotion to black which will be relevant later on um, but it's one black mana for an enchantment with flash and when it enters the battlefield return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand so you'll be able to get back a crypt rats or your one okiva gang shinobi that died or another chittering rats or something like that um, quite handy and then you can pay two and a black and sack it to scry two at any point so again your card quality is quite high however having that scry two sitting on the battlefield to use whenever you have some spare mana is quite nice uh, then next we've got two or four sign in blood sorry uh, black black for a sorcery target player draws two cards and loses two life uh, this is my preferred way to kill someone to be honest um, get your opponent down to two or one life and then just target them with a sign in blood that's uh, that's one of my favorite ways but this is uh, two mana draw two so it, it should definitely be included in the deck it's normally harder to cast where any deck that isn't mono black but in here there's no problem uh, Phyrexian Rager, 2 and a black for a 2-2 horror. And when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card and lose a life. That's uh, that's it. It's quite simple, it's quite straightforward. It's a creature that is slightly below um, slightly below cost. So, 2 and a black for a 2-2, not great. But when you add a draw card, a replacement effect onto it, um, where it re not a replacement effect, it replaces itself, uh, that's pretty good. That's very, very good. Uh, and then finally in our card advantage suite, we have one Thorn of the Black Rose. It's three and a black for a 1-3 with Death Touch, and when it enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. The way the Monarch works is, at the beginning of your end step, you draw a card. And whenever a creature, an opponent controls deal combat damage to you, you lose the Monarch, and they gain the Monarch. Now, as you can see, with all the removal that we have here, the likelihood of them actually getting any creatures through onto us is quite low. Uh, but with that said, we're only running one of because it's not a great cost. Like, four mana for a 1-3 death touch is not great. Like, it does still die to the likes of Bolt and everything. And then finally, we have four Grey Merchant Vasfidel. Uh, Gary, the reason that we have... The reason that we have um, the likes of the Omen of the Dead in the deck, um, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life and... Um, 
x is your devotion to black and then you gain life equal to the life lost this way so uh, if you have a couple of creatures that this can drain for up to 10 12 i think the greatest that i've done on this so far is drained for 14 uh, which is quite nice uh, then the mana base it is incredibly straightforward there's 23 lands uh, there's 18 swamps because we need to make sure we have a lot of swamps for defile and um, then we also have two bajuka bog um, which is just main deck graveyard hate which is quite nice we will be killing so many things that we want to make sure that the opponent doesn't have any like reanimate stuff or flashback stuff or anything like that so that's handy there and then we've got three baron moors uh, which enter the battlefield tap tap for black but cycle for one black as well um, a lot of the, the mono black control decks run 22 lands and no baron moors but i actually prefer to run three baron moors and 23 lands because if in doubt add more lands and um, that's that's always just the rule um, just make sure you hit your land drops for these kinds of decks and um, then in the sideboard it's pretty straightforward to be honest um we have two nihil spell bomb for uh graveyard hate that can cycle uh, we've echoing decay to deal with stuff like uh, tokens or elves and that kind of thing we have four wrench mind because tron is not a good matchup for us um in general like they just go bigger than we do and um, so we've got that there uh we've got crypt rats um because if we are against elves or anything like that it's a nice way to take care of them uh Farika's libation uh we have an additional two uh, edict effects in the sideboard that can also deal with enchantments not usually super relevant but the flexibility of this card is part of its power so uh we also have three choking sands to destroy target non-swamp lands so again this comes in against tron uh, one more tendrils of corruption if we're against things like uh, boros monarch and um, this is quite good against or also burn or stompy and then pestilence is just another board sweeper so um that is basically how this goes um now i do know that uh, magic online isn't actually on for a whole lot longer today i believe it's another hour and a half or so and um, so this will be a somewhat shorter uh, stream than usual because of that um, but we might be able to play a little bit of uh they might jump onto arena play a little bit of historic or something after this and um, see how it goes but we'll play uh we'll play a game out here in a moment now just gotta wait for someone to pop up this is uh this is a this is a really really fun deck this is one of my favorite decks if not my favorite deck in popper um, which is weird because I normally really really love combo decks and that kind of thing but this there's just something about this one it just feels right if that makes sense it feels right oh we got a game alrighty uh, we lost the die roll um, not that big of a deal unless they are particularly aggressive now we have a re reasonable few ways of gaining life and that kind of thing so we're not too concerned about the more aggressive matches but we do need to be aware well we can't keep a zero lander unfortunately as much as i'd love this to be that kind of deck uh we've two lands everything in our hand costs more than that i think we can do better with a five to be honest not a great start that's even worse um <laughs> uh let's mulligan down again uh yeah okay so it looks like we're keeping four um that's a very rough start let's uh get rid of gray merchant uh thorn of the black rose and uh, which of the two is better i'll get rid of a swamp actually because at least this way we can cast two things in hand it's not a great start not a great start but we'll see uh carrying feeder okay so this could be um golgari aristocrats possibly or a tortured existence build um either way i think we're reasonably okay for this one for this matchup let's see what our opponent's got okay it is in fact zombies <laughs> like i said uh this is where our victim of night is uh, is not going to be of any effect because everything is a zombie but that's okay it's only two cards in our deck and we can we can rip those out post board uh and step yep that's fine um i think what i want to do here is i think i want to sign and blood myself because i want to try and recoup the the life l or the the cards lost 
uh, and I definitely want to hit my third land drop and I'm kind of glad I did that but this is now a dead card which is unfortunate but um yeah next turn we have Kumbaj which is we can put out if we don't hit a land drop um I'd love to hit one though uh, the edicts don't feel super great here either mostly because the likes of doom to center um and festering mummy they can happily just sacrifice the the ones that they don't care about in order to to deal with to get around the the downside of edict uh okay thank you magic online for letting me know that you're going down in a in an hour or so Um, it was a random time as well. I was like, we want to let you know that we're going offline in one hour and 17 minutes. What? <laughs> uh, okay, that's very unfortunate. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have to Kumbaj Witches and hope for the best. Multi four in the first game. Not, uh, not great. Not great. Uh, let's ship it over. So they could sacrifice Carrion Feeder and put a minus one minus one counter on the kumbaj witches which means that the only thing that i could effectively deal with with kumbaj witches will be doomed to center but then that creates a t2 zombie but um yeah i kind of like the art on this chittering rat discordant piper oh that's a zombie too okay that's a nice nice new addition from um from Theros. Honestly, I think I think Theros Beyond Death is probably more impactful to Popper than people think it might be. This feeder is going to get big, quite big. Uh, yep, that was a tragic slip. Uh, one black instant creature gets minus one minus one to end a turn, but if a creature died this turn, it gets minus thirteen minus thirteen instead. So, yep, <laughs> not great, not great. This is a this is a bit of a poor start. Um, but on multi four, kind of kind of to be expected, I guess. Land will be okay here because I think. What would I rather see here? Would I rather see another card, or would I rather slow their draws? They have two cards in hand. I think I want to see another card. Okay. Edict. Not what I want to see. <laughs> um, now, what we could do if we're lucky this turn, we could. If they don't have a way to get rid of the Fraction Raider, we can block the Carrion Feeder. I don't mind chump blocking, that's fine. Um, a lot of our creatures are fine with being chump blockers. What am I hoping for here? So these edicts feel terrible because of when these die, they, they give our opponent bonuses. So not, not fantastic. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. got to make it even smaller. Yep. So now three mana, one, one. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm gonna F six here because uh, we can't do anything. So I'll just let them let them do their thing. Um, yeah. So that's a five five. If they don't play another creature, we can defile the zombie and edict them to kill the carrion feeder. But there's a fume spitter, so probably not good. Um, okay, they're gonna kill that off which five six seven ah uh, yeah that'll do it that'll do it supernatural stamina gives plus two plus oh and then when it dies uh returns to the battlefield tapped under its opponent or in under its controllers what is it what's the wording on that again uh when this creature dies returns to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control uh yep yeah, so that is nine damage to us uh we died if we got a land coming up here no no we were we were kind of screwed in that match that's un, that's unfortunate but okay so we know that we can take out victim of night because this hits non-zombies and they're zombie tribal 
So uh, the edicts also don't feel very good, but I don't know if we have a huge amount of things to bring in. We can bring in one tendrils of corruption, no problem. Um, we can bring in the crypt rats, no problem. Um, we can bring in echoing decay, no problem. We can also do pestilence. Pestilence is good. And are the wrench mines better than the chainer's edicts here? That's my that's my thinking. Probably not. No, probably not. Um yeah, this is probably as good as we can get here. The spell bombs, we can make an argument for the spell bombs, because they do have a little bit of graveyard recursion, but think we're fine with the bajuka bogs this is the, the, yeah this is the kind of uh, matchup um where we wouldn't be too concerned about graveyard hate so the bajuka bogs themselves should actually be able to just pull us through with that uh, we wouldn't want to oversaturate with them but we will see all right we would definitely like to play and hopefully keep seven Yes, we can keep this. It, all the cards we have are expensive, but they're good. So I'm going to keep. And I know this is going to look a bit mad, but I'm going to. No, I think, I think I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to play the Baron more. I was considering cycling it to try and find earlier interaction, but I think I would definitely just rather hit my land drops. Hope they don't have a carrying feeder in turn one. Mortician Beetle, that's pretty good too. Whenever a player sacrifices a creature, he gets a plus one, plus one counter. Uh, Crypt Rats is a great draw here. So we can play Crypt Rats next turn. That kind of forces them to do something. Well, no, we'll play Chittering Rats next turn, unless they commit heavily to the board here, which I doubt it. They'd have to play a two more one drops. Um, Lazatep Reaver, yeah, I can, I can wait. I can wait for on this. That's a nice addition to this um, to that deck, actually. Kind of like a Mog War Marshal, only for zombies. Uh, yeah, I'll take your one. Now this is where Chittering Rats should work pretty well. It should start doing some work for us, um, because if we play this and then we play Chittering Rats, they're now denied a draw step, which means if they're looking to try and get a third land or or anything like that, they now can't for this turn. Their their draw is going to be replaced, which is quite nice. Okay. I'm not particularly used to this matchup, to be honest. Mono black control versus zombies. Um, zombies feels like it's got reasonable game, to be honest. Uh, another Mortician Beetle, that's fine. That is fine. Um, if they tap out here and we draw a land, I would be very much up for... Um, what do I want to block here? This feels like they have a way of sacrificing a creature. And I think I want to do it in such a way that sacri them sacrificing a creature is not beneficial so i'm gonna do it here so i feel like they might have like a tragic slip or something here if that's the case that's fine these will trade off it's not a big deal supernatural stamina okay sure um that's fine they've, they've used a the trick now they're tapped out um that won't come back because it's a token so uh if we get a land here no we did not okay so they've got three cards in hand. What do we want to do? I think I'm going to sign a blood myself. I definitely want to hit my lands. Um, rough. Uh, I'm going to defile one of these, I guess. Better off doing that than, uh, than not doing anything. Um, yeah. Not a not a not a perfect turn. Bearing in mind that this is with twenty three lands, and 
some builds run 22 and we're already missing land drops after three so you can kind of understand uh, how important it is to to have that extra land uh, okay so this is good um Welcome, Rogue Zebra. Looking for a good popper deck to start with. Uh, I'd recommend this if you like mid range. This is this is definitely the way to go. Um, honestly, I think I'm actually just gonna pass the turn here. Um, unfortunately, this uh, this stream won't be the longest stream because Magic Online is actually being taken down for a while. In about, uh, I think it's about an hour at this point, maybe a little bit more. Um, so it's not not ideal, but. We can get we can definitely get a couple games in uh, i think i'm gonna want to they have no sack outlet right now so i think i want to tendrils of corruption this they should deal three damage and we should gain three if they have a way to keep this alive it's going to be rough um okay that's fine that's fine it gets undying so it'll come back it'll come back with a plus one plus one counter on it it's not great but we can if we get a land this turn we'll be able to wipe the board on the same turn i kind of don't want to expose the crypt rats to potentially getting removed yeah perfect so here's what we could do um we play this um spend two black on it and then we do two damage to everything sure they'll get the i could have done this in upkeep actually because then these wouldn't have uh summoning sickness but learn the hard way learn the hard way it's what i normally do <laughs> uh okay so what we can do if they don't play any creatures out which they do okay so the the Thor and the Black Rose plan is out the door for now. But we'll see. Okay, yeah, we'll take two. That's fine. Um, what do I want to see off my draws here? Um, Swamp's not great. Uh, okay, so we have six mana. What do I want to do with it? I think this edict feels terrible, but it's not going to get any better. Um, so I think I'm going to do an edict. And then I'm just going to pass the turn. Um, so now next turn, if we draw a land, our land is better because we have an edict in the bin that we can at least use, which admittedly still not great, but have the option the problem here is we've, we've kind of drawn our more expensive cards and they are quite low to the ground with quite a bit of recursion um yeah removal tribal doesn't really deal so well against zombies it seems but uh am i okay with taking three here in case they play out something that is more important to take care of yeah i think so And step, yeah, I'm gonna tendrils this now. This should do five damage, we gain five life. Is Gary the main win condition? Um yeah, Gary tends to be one of the main win conditions. Um the other main win condition really is like a lot of your creatures are fine, like chittering rats and that kind of thing. Um, usually you'll attrition your opponent down and you'll be left with a couple of uh, a couple of like smaller creatures like that um, also crypt rats is quite good um, because if I had a crypt rats on board right now I'd be able to do 6 damage to them which is quite nice um, I think I want a thorn of the black rose here I think I need to start refilling so we get a thorn out they shouldn't be able to get it this turn hopefully um so now let's pass the turn hopefully we draw some instant speed interaction which would be quite nice um we also have um we have a 
You lost the sound. Huh. Can you hear me now? Uh, do you have me back by any chance? It's weird that the sound's gone. It's showing. It's showing is fine here, but hmm. Um, I'm talking away to see if any of this stuff works. Oh, they are good. They're pretty good. It's working here for me. Yeah. Oh, weird. Uh, this is unfortunate. Uh, Rogue Zebra, I don't know if you can hear me, but um, we just checked the sound on another device here, and it seems to be working fine. But Okay, so this is not ideal, but we're going to have to play out some Garys. Okay. Do a drain, please. Oh my, they're just determined to use all those counters. <laughs> all the minus one, minus one counters. Wow. Really? They're just having the perfect answers here. This is really rough. Um, yep, yep, that's that's fine, opponent. <laughs> you randomly paired to a roommate's Bluetooth. Nice. Ah, that's awful. Yep. Um, okay, so well, at least we know that they don't have anything else at this point. They have no cards in hand. Um, this does mean that our chittering rats are worse because they're just three mana two twos now. But uh, sorry, they do have one card. They have the monarch. My bad. Uh, okay, Phyrexian Rager. Let's let's get that out. Let's get out the Rager. See what they do. See what they get us. Crypt rats is quite good actually. Um, I think Crypt Rats is where we want to be right now, actually. Because if we put this out, if they don't kill it, then we'll be able to wipe their board. And if they do kill it, then it's not going to... The if they have any removal in hand, it's not going on our Gary instead. Which is quite nice. We are definitely on the back foot, though. They've been putting a lot of pressure on us. I had zombies quite a while ago. Um, I'd say it's nearly two years ago at this point. I had zombies in paper, and it was, it was quite good, um, but not, not this good. Feels like there's there's been some upgrades here, in the last while. Um, okay, so what we need to do here is, uh, I think we want to block. The carrion feeder. The reason for that is because in order for them to do anything with the carrion feeder, they're gonna have to cast whatever it is that's in their hand right now. And in response to that, we can then activate crypt rats and kill everything on the board. So I think we're in a reasonably safe spot. Okay. That's fine. I'll I'll allow that. That's okay. Put a plus one plus one counter on it. Yeah, that's also fine. Um we have to be careful with our timing here. Uh yes, that's okay. Now if I pay two, we can kill everything on board. Because they have two damage marked on this. So, oh, now the, we got to be careful. Because if we... 
They can sacrifice to make it a 5-5. Five five, which means that we will be able to mark up to 4 damage on it. So we actually have to wait until our turn to do this. Which is really unfortunate. Um... Uh, actually, no, it's very, very simple. We could do this now. Um, I see the line. What? No, I want to... Why is it X equals zero? <laughs> I wanted that to be X equals two. I thought it, I thought I counted the, the mana there, but we'll obviously have to do it again. Well, that was a that was a boo boo on my part. Okay, um, one, two. There we go. Two damage. See what you do. They could sacrifice the manifest and the Lazatep Reaver to the carrying feeder, and to grow it. If they do, we can then untap and use the edict in the bin. think we're in a pretty safe spot here despite our low life total we do have to get that monarch back though um i was not expecting the way that they the way that they took the monarchy from us was was very clever to be fair very very clever is our opponent gonna do anything Downtime overall rate. Downtime is not actually not actually happened yet, so we're still going. We got about we got about f I'd say about fifty five minutes before downtime happens. So uh, so yeah, settle in if you like. Welcome along. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Come on, opponent. Come on, opponent. They are definitely taking their time. Oh, they're going to go for it. They're going to go for it. Yeah, that's fine. Yep, you got it. You got it. You get to keep your carrying feeder. So I feel like one of the cards that they just drew is uh, is another undying or supernatural stamina kind of job. So let's find out. Let's find out. Yep, there it is. Comes back at the end of turn. Or, oh no, it re enters now. Re enters now. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, hopefully, they don't play out too much here. Um, yeah, we're very much on the back foot here. This has been surprisingly grindy. Um, Zombies is normally a bit more aggressively slanted, um, but our opponent here, Randopolis, is uh, definitely showing their mastery of the deck. For sure. Showing a scrub my, like me how I should have been playing with it when I had the deck. <laughs> yeah, they're 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 doing this really well. Um yep, we're getting a combat step. It's impressive that they've been able to stay at three lands for the entire the entire thing and draw no more. <laughs> um Yeah, so if our opponent draws some removal here, we're basically dead um this is our best bet not a great bet but we got to do it uh so what our opponent can do here is they can sacrifice the manifest to carrying feeder if they have a tragic slip and if that happens then we're in a lot of trouble but it seems like we're not so let's sign in blood it's very risky to do this now because if they have a single removal spell we're in trouble um 
but we might actually get paid off here so hopefully hopefully we will see uh, this defile is what's gonna save us I think uh, sure Vulgar91, welcome along. I just started playing MTGO. It's not very intuitive. It's not particularly intuitive, no. Um, I will I will absolutely concede that. <laughs> um, yeah, not, not, not ideal, really. Um, okay, so I'm gonna block here. Um, the, the key things to, the key things to note is like, are, are there any particular things that you're unsure of that you want to ask or, um, or anything like that because that I can I can definitely help out with it's very hard to be like okay well step one of magic online because there are so many different things that you could be you, you could there's so many different places where you can start and stuff with it so um, it's it's hard to to sort of pinpoint or get or give like specific things but if there's anything you're unsure of by all means ask and i'll do my best to, to answer i'm not i'm not a master of it myself but i know most things in it i would say um okay is this where we start to slowly crawl back in here it does leave a lot of room for for player this is yeah i'll, I'll definitely agree with that um Okay, I think, no, I don't want to do that just yet. Um, I think I'm on a Chittering Rats um, because this will give us greater devotion. This now denies us a, denies them a draw step. Um, one thing to bear in mind is down here, um, I don't know if you know about these, but the, the stops down here, the ones on the bottom are where you want to place a stop on your turn and the ones on top are the ones where you want to place a stop on your opponent's turn. At the different phases. Um, I'm going to attack with Gary. Um, I feel like there's nothing that can go wrong here based on the board state, I believe. You put your own lance. Oh, yeah, that's rough. That's rough. It's uh, there, there, there are definitely a lot of things. Like, I might end up doing a video on, on how to. Uh, how to moto because it it's definitely as you said it's definitely not intuitive um but okay so we're going to gain six here which is quite nice and drain our opponent for six down to eight um so we very much even the even the score here um our opponent might have the monarchy for now but hopefully they can't flood the board here and prevent us from getting it from them hopefully Um, I'm going to let that through. I'm going to let that through because I feel like that kind of attack tells us that they have a tragic slip and they need to use it. They need to kill something with it. Uh, Lazatep Reaver, that's fine. If they still have a tragic slip here, they are able, they're going to be able to take care of the chittering rats and prevent us from attacking in, which is quite good. Um, on their side i think it's actually cards like the lazatev reaver here that create two bodies is what makes this a harder matchup now um this is actually a pretty good draw let's arrest them see what they got um sure okay they have undying another lazatev reaver jeez all right um sure well i guess in that case we have to get some attacking on um let's get our attacks in So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna take the monarchy, I'm gonna play Pestilence, that'll leave me with three mana open to use Pestilence on. 
or use for pestilence. So that's, if they just don't block here, they die, um, which is it's good good for me. I'm okay with that. <laughs> I'm definitely okay with that. Um, yeah, if anybody, by the way, is in chat at the moment and has um, any questions about either MTGO or Popper or honestly nearly any format um any 75 card format then just ask away feel free uh, i know a lot of people are sort of new to to magic online and that kind of stuff now so it can be very confusing or expensive or whichever um i've been getting along fine with uh with minimal cost so um by all means ask away uh Yep, so we get back the monarchy, which is quite nice. Um, that has undying. That comes back. That makes a thing. That's okay. Because here's pestilence. Boop, 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 boop. Yep, draw a card. Uh, okay, not ideal, but they don't know that. So <laughs> this could be a removal spell for all they know. Uh, I think we're kind of set here. I don't know what they can draw that would prevent us from winning here. Because if they go to attacks here... One, two, three, four, five. That'll put us to three. Um, so I don't want to do that. So obviously it's going to force me to fire off. Um, fire off Pestilence here. Um, this works quite nicely because it does it one at a time. Um, which means that we'll be able to kill this zombie as well. Yeah, we got there. Yeah, and then our opponent will be left with three mana or three life, and then we can just swing with our two Garys, and then we're kind of good. Um, is there anything else we want to change? Um, those edicts feel really terrible. Oh, we got forty-five minutes left. Okay. Um, those edicts feel really, really terrible, and honestly, they they drew just enough cards there to. Well, no, I think I think we're actually kind of okay. I think as we're looking here, we're kind of all right. They seem less on the on the using cards specifically for recursion, a la like Omen of the Dead or whatever. Um, or there's a there's a three mana grave crawler for uh, for zombies. I can't remember what it's called, but um, yeah, they seem to be less on that and more on just the the grinded value. So I I think this is a bit of a better option to go with yeah i don't think we'll i don't think we'll do the wrench mines i think we'll we'll stick with the two edicts because as much as i don't like them they impact the board better than wrench mine does um wrench mind is really just kind of there for for the likes of the tron matchups or the the card advantage heavy matchups um i actually don't mind bringing these in against so the likes of boros monarch boros monarch if you don't know about it it's it looks to play palace sentinels which is a four mana Oh, two four. Uh, when it hits the battlefield, you become the monarch, uh, and it wants to do. It basically wants to do that, and then grind out a lot of value with the likes of prophetic prism or alchemist vials or golden eggs or those two mana eggs or whatever, uh, and then recur them with core sky fishers and basically just keep bouncing and replaying stuff. Um, despite the fact that the likes of the prophetic prisms and everything are in fact artifacts so technically wrench mine will be worse if they end up discarding their key engine piece um that's that's actually pretty good um so i don't mind like say two wrench mind in that kind of matchup and um, because sometimes you do actually just need to get them to to get cards out of their hand to reduce their uh, effectiveness worth pointing out though some builds do run the artifact lands uh, so that they can run stuff like Galvanic Blast. Um, which means that they can potentially just end up discarding a land, which is pretty feels bad. So it does depend on the build, I think. Which is a way for our opponent to uh, to do their thing here. Come in for, for the final game. 
So yeah, anybody that's joined recently, this is Mono Black Control. It's actually a mid-range deck. And yeah, it kind of plays like Jund does in Modern. It looks to disrupt and, and blow up basically everything and then stick one or two threats and win the game. The key threat in this deck being Gary. Who doesn't, who doesn't love slamming a Gary? Feels good. Our opponent is playing Mono Black Zombies, which, like I said, is like a tier like five or six deck. Like it's not really one that shows up at all, but they're 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 playing it masterfully. They're doing a really good job. Finally, some popper content. Welcome along. Good to have you here. Uh, yeah, I'm planning on doing some more popper content because a lot of people are starting to join magic online because we're all stuck indoors at the moment um we're we're basically stuck in here in ireland um we can we can leave to like go shops and stuff but like not not like clothes shopping or whatever you know or game shopping or whatever but you know to like supermarkets and stuff is fine um but yeah most a lot of places are closed as of today isn't it yeah yeah as of today a lot of places closed like libraries um bedding shops lots of hairdressers. hairdressers that kind of thing um so in a in a couple months time we are all going to be very shaggy looking so but uh yeah the reason that that's the reason why i'm going on doing popper content because uh, a lot of people are starting magic online and they don't necessarily want to pump a load of money into it especially if you look at some of the modern decks going at up to a thousand ticks for some of the four color control lists um so yeah it's pretty ridiculous um rolling a cool five color delver deck i do love delver decks you had me at delver <laughs> uh making abundant growth new arkham's astrolabe we don't use the we don't use that word here arkham's astrolabe <laughs> <laughs> no nah, i'm joking i'm joking um like I'll, I'll be honest i played i played five color mono black back when astro oops back when astrolabe was was in the format because um well why not i could i could play uh i could play sky fishers in my mono, mono black deck um along with four prophetic prism for um arkham's astrolabe and then i could run what was it again i was running what was the red i was running i was running gorilla shamans in the sideboard for sure and pyroblasts and main deck i think i think i had one or two firebolt because they were just good value um uh, i'm gonna get this name completely wrong i i love mert <laughs> i think i love mert thank you very much for the follow and welcome along i, I love mert um i yeah I'm getting this very wrong. <laughs> uh, our opponent seems to just not be bothered anymore by the looks of it. Um, so I think we're just gonna we're just gonna close off this game and just try and get another one in before the before the downtime. Got it right the first time. No way. <laughs> nice. Um, you love playing with Arkham's Astrolabe and Popper. Don't understand where they found it um or you understand what the band is mr jank brewing um yeah see this is this is the thing with with arkham's astrolabe it it looks the 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 real power was was in how innocuous it was like people looked at it and went what do you mean ban that what are you talking about it just fills your mana like we've always been talking about how pauper needs better mana like come on um nah -uh, that's not nope that's not how that's not how good it, that's not a good description of how powerful it was but yeah like it people just saw it and was like oh, i don't see what the big deal is and that was what part of the problem was in how it stayed around for so long and i think we'll keep this exactly yeah it's a cantrip that makes any land a five color land i'd argue it's one of the greatest um cantrips ever printed um because like if you look at if you look at the likes of legacy legacy is ruined at the moment i think because there were decks that just go like turn two uh him to torak and then turn three oko and then like then the next turn they him to torak ren and six and they're using basics and your opponent's sitting there with wastelands and they're like uh i can't do this you know that feels real bad it feels real bad um let's find out what our opponent is doing the joys of duress main deck 
All right, so we're against. Ooh, we are against. This is Tron by the looks of it. The expedition map. Yep, and the two mana cyclers. So, um, compulsive research, draw three cards, a discard two cards, unless it is card land, maybe. Expedition map. Teachings. I'm not a big fan of getting rid of teachings for obvious reasons. Uh, I think I want to get rid of map. And we'll pass the turn. This is not a great matchup for us. Um, but we can we can possibly get there. We could possibly get there. Our sideboard is very much tuned for this kind of matchup. So I'm uh, I'm okay with this. This could be a long one though. <laughs> Strap in. Um I'm gonna sign in blood myself because I definitely want to make sure that we maintain um the card card advantage here where possible. Uh yes, over to you opponent. Uh, I would not be surprised also if we saw what's it called? Uh, Arkham's Astrolabe being uh, banned in modern at some point as well. Again, I said that I actually said this, oh, it's got to be months ago at this point, um, that it's going to be, it's going to be very, very big. It's going to be a very big deal in, uh, in modern. And people were like, what are you talking about? Don't be ridiculous. Have you seen the card? It doesn't do anything. And then now you see these like five color Niv decks that are running, um, all gold cards and Arkham's Astrolabe and then sideboard they've got Blood Moon because they can just get around it um, which feels ridiculous absolutely <laughs> ridiculous but yeah I think they went they, got, they made it a little too good I think at that point but hey what can you do time will tell time will tell um Alrighty. Compulsive research. They pitched a land. Okay. So out of the cards that we've seen, compulsive research has been cast. Remote Isle has been played. They still have Muldrifter and Mnemonic Wall. The Tranquil Cove is on the battlefield and they still have the teachings. Okay. So that means there's three cards we don't know. Um. Okay, so what I'm going to do so I'm gonna sign and blood myself. See what I get. Okay, so we got Baron Moore and uh yeah, that's all we got. We just got the Baron Moors there. So um, I think I'm actually gonna cycle Baron Moore now. Uh play a swamp cycle Baron Moor. Yeah, this is okay. Hey, our hand isn't great. Um, you'd like to see some other attempts at improving Popper's mana. Uh, Tarnished Citadel. I'm trying to remember what Tarnished Citadel is. Bear with me a moment. Uh, I'll just pull it up here. Tarnished Citadel. Uh, Tarnished Citadel is an interesting one, actually. Um, it's... It's... I don't know if it'd be good enough, to be honest. Strange as that might be, because it was once a rare. So, um, yeah, don't 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 give your mana silex as a cantrip effect. It's just leads to leads to trouble, leads to problems. Um, okay, they're getting close to Tron, but we will see. We'll see if we can start pressuring them soon. Hmm. It would seem like the answer so far is a no. There's a bunch of stuff that are that's in our hand that we just really don't want in this matchup, which is unfortunate. But um, let's go to combat anyway. So they need to naturally draw. Um. Do I want to bajuke about them now so that they can't play Mnemonic Wall with off a of land next turn and get back compulsive research? It feels like it's not a ridiculous thing to do. So I think I'll do it. Um, Graveyard Hate's actually surprisingly good in this matchup. Um, because a lot of the quote unquote combos that they they play are uh, 
for that kind of thing. This might seem silly, but this is actually it speeds our clock up by fifty percent. So three damage a turn instead of instead of two is impactful enough. Uh, yeah, there's another land that could have cast from the Monarch Wall now, but they can't really do it for any value, so they might do a Mold Rifter here. Yep. Mold Rifter. They draw two. They're back to seven cards. Flicker Engines and Problem. Flicker Engines and Popper are really backbreaking in the format. I agree. Um, I absolutely agree. I think we Edict here. We edict here, we go to combat, we attack with everything, we put them to 14, then next turn, assuming everything resolves. <clears throat> Did I? Yeah, I held back the, the bog. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So if we hit them next turn, we can edict them. If we get an if we get a swamp, I don't want to play this Bajuka Bog out because I want to hold on to it. Um, another Mold Drifter, sure, sure, sure. You're drawing a lot of cards. There are nine cards in hand currently. Um, I don't see how this is okay for a format, to be honest. Um, when Tron just went over the top with big creatures instead of having a power flicker engine, it was a manageable and decent deck. I loved Fanger and Tron. Fanger and Tron was so friggin' cool. Um, yeah, it's just basically unbeatable endgame. Uh, I'm going to do this now just to be mana efficient. If you would like to do something to this. Oh, mm, yeah. I thought they'd have it. Didn't expect them to have it there. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, they're going to discard... Despite having cast, despite having played a land and cast two spells that turn, they're still at nine cards in hand. Uh, Tron's a problem. Tron's a problem, folks. Don't don't be like Johnny Tron over here. Don't play this version of Tron. Play Fangren and Tron. Like uh, I love Mert um, said, is a is a good, it's a good thing. Okay, so here's what we can do. We can edict them. Boop sack a creature now they've no targets for their ephemerate which is quite nice now we attack with these then we play gary they're down to six so if they now don't deal with this crypt rats uh we untap and win the game so we are completely tapped out now though so if they do some mad stuff um there's not much we can do about it prism draw card yes it is a one mana ghostly flicker like the 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 tron decks are are out of control you know what i actually remember when tron was a five color control deck that ran rolling thunder as a means to um as a means to to sort of win through that way um but like that was really good does tron still run pulse of marasa um it can do some builds do uh, basically at this point the, the despite running 16 ish colorless lands um they have essentially perfect mana and we'll just kind of do whatever uh, i've got a strange feeling that we're getting uh reaping the graves yeah this ain't good this is not good <laughs> um yeah, Rolling Thunder, sweet. Rolling Thunder is sweet. Um, yeah, I think they're about to just ruin us um, quite heavily. Uh, yeah, they could have Pulse Marasa. They, they have a weathered the storm, so they're about to gain like nine life or something ridiculous here. Twelve life. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So they're back to 18. Um, and we are now essentially, oh, hold on. Are we, are we out of the game just yet? I think I want to bog them now because 
I definitely don't want them getting Reaping the Graves or Weather the Storm back or Teachings for that matter. I think... Does this work? I'm gonna I'm gonna play this now. Then go to combat. And now they're gonna have to do something. Again, they're gonna have to pull it off this turn. In order to stay alive. But they're all, all the decks that are gonna be able to do it. It's it's them. Uh they have two mold drifters in hand. And one, two, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. They have thirteen mana available pending a land drop yeah tron like i said hard matchup we're 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 absolutely pounding them here and they're getting nowhere so or we're getting nowhere sorry uh, we are 28 life though which means that if they're gonna if they're gonna win they're gonna take a very long time to do so, <laughs> so um yeah it's good to know though that um tron is currently on the downswing um, which is quite nice on the dance wing there's a there's a bunch of different decks that get around trans different ways of winning like they can they can do fog locks and stuff um they seem to have had enough of that game and think that they might be able to do better post board okay so here is what we got here's what we got we've got three choking sands that we can bring in to blow up lands and that's fine. And it's non-basic as well, so it deals an extra bit of chip damage. Uh, we have four wrench mind to try and pull their hand apart. And the good thing is, despite the fact that they run lots of our um, artifacts like uh, prophetic prism and stuff and map, um, this they they're key pieces in the deck. So getting rid of those is is fine by me. Um, I quite like crypt rats in this match because they are. They, they're ways of, of reach of, of getting around the fogs and stuff that they run so i would be inclined to bring that in as well probably pestilence too to be honest um because we'll probably have loads and loads of life so i'm okay with that uh, i'll bring a pestilence in the tendrils of corruption will come out the the weaker cards in here will basically come out um Keep going, Shinobi is good, Gary is good, like I said, Crypt Rats is good. Um, we can pull a couple of Edicts because they don't have a whole lot of creatures, to be honest. Um, we have six more cards to pull. I like leaving the Defiles, they're, they're good because any of the creatures that they, they have are either small or they're big but they're late game, so this scales nicely with that. Um, so I would be inclined to yeah pull the Kumbaj Witches, they don't do anything in this match, to be honest um they do technically give us an additional bit of reach but it's not really worth it to be honest um phyrexian rager is fine it's not amazing but it's fine um to be honest we don't need a whole lot of removal so i actually think instant speed removal is nice versus flicker yeah you're right you're right um i'm gonna get rid of the changes edix because we have two victim of night here they're instant speed we have four defile which is instant speed um and then we can activate crypt rats or pestilence at instant speed as well i don't want to spend four mana on a removal spell uh, against the deck with counter spells is my thinking but bringing in four wrench mind three choking sands one pestilence and one crypt rats um seems reasonable and um, we just now have to figure out what else to pull i would consider maybe a rager yeah let's pull out a rager um honestly i don't know if thorn is a good idea in this matchup but we have to find a way of i'm gonna pull an omen of the dead as well um and let's try it like th i'm gonna pull one of this and add one of that and submit the deck with three seconds left um i kind of like an additional piece of graveyard hate i don't want to overload because then if we over sideboard then we're gonna, not going to have enough of a clock um this is a pretty good starting hand so we can go turn one nile spell bomb under a counter that's nice um we can then turn to wrench mind and then turn three <laughs> sign of blood assuming that we don't draw anything better so i'm kind of okay with that uh they've got map if they have turn three tron we might just lose no matter what um but these things happen uh okay so swamp and spell bomb and pass turn 
next turn this one coming up definitely feels like a wrench mind turn what's my opinion of wrench mind versus distress um it really depends to be honest if you have it depends on what you're playing against like if you have a lot of say like affinity and stuff wrench mind is going to be terrible um for obvious reasons um they're gonna have turn three tron so let's try and make that as weak as possible um i am not a huge fan of distress in mono black control and the reason for that is because uh duress will basically do as good of a job um and the reason for that is because we have so much removal that it kind of doesn't matter um if we can't touch creatures in their hand because once they come in we can just kill them uh, for the most part for the most part but there are obviously exceptions you know like you'd rather take a muldrifter out of hand than kill it on board because it means they've drawn two cards off it but again it it is very much uh it's very much determinate based on what what they're doing um what are my thoughts on Omen of the Dead and how it's performed for me? Instant Speed Raise Dead with the Scry 2 later seems okay. This is the thing. I haven't actually played a whole lot with Omen of the Dead in here. I used to have Unearth because I really liked being able to, you know, block um, in, in more aggressive metagames. I preferred Unearth because you can put down like a Phyrexian Rager or Chittering Rats to draw another card or prevent a draw or whatever from your, from your opponent. Uh, then ch then block or trade off um or whichever and then just literally just get it back and get even more value but i don't think that's necessary now with the way that the way that everything is at the moment like with with the likes of tron and the more delvery decks and stuff i think i think i'm i kind of like the way that it is i think i'm good with passing the turn um i like the way that the omen of the dead works it it adds additional devotion to um to the board for gary which is nice um the scry 2 like we have generally speaking got good top decks anyway so i'm not too concerned about um about you know getting the right um oh they've natural tron look at that very nice well they cracked the map so like you know um what are they casting oh, as a muldrifter yeah yeah it's a muldrifter that's fine um yeah so i like the idea of being able to just sort of scry and get some more stuff um that we need to the top or to the bottom or whichever um so yeah it seems it seems good i haven't i haven't come to a full decision on it yet um but i do think that it's been working out pretty well i think um i think this is a good spot to do this because now what have they got This seems weird. Afterlife, instant, destroy target creature. It can't be regenerated. Its controller creates a one-one white spirit creature token with flying. I'm okay with them keeping that. I'm getting rid of Pulse Marasa. Uh, then I'm gonna bog them. <laughs> uh, so our opponent has. Um. I can't remember exactly the cards that they had. I think it was Remote Isle and Power Plant or something like that. Um, I think what I want to do here is I think I want to sign in Blood Mice. No, I want to hold up this Defile actually in case they top deck a... Uh, in case they top deck an Ephemerate or something, I think. I think. Um, this is probably going to be our last game be honest because uh we don't have much time until the down time but uh they decided not to attack that was interesting no attacks what is it that they have drawn forbidden alchemy um i think i'm going to use this opportunity to defile this now then So that wasn't in hand at the start, which means that that's what they drew for turn. Which means they're going to look at the top four, put one in their hand, the rest in their graveyard. And then if they try to do anything, we can just spell bomb them. Um, so they neglected to take an exclude or a land. Uh, 
uh, I'm going to pop this spell bomb now. Uh, the reason for this is because if the prophetic prism comes down, it means they have access to colored mana and they may be able to do something with the bin. Oh, offline in 17 minutes. We can do this. We can make it. <laughs> uh, the fact that we won game one against Tron is actually quite good. Um, I'm not saying it's an abysmal matchup, but you kind of have to build your deck a little bit more towards beating Tron in in some kind of certain scenarios so um i think i'm gonna rager this is a pretty reasonable counter target so if they have a counter they'll probably use it here um sure thing draw a card and lose a life this is how we keep up with our card advantage now uh, we're gonna sign in blood ourselves Okay, quite nice, quite nice. Um, so if they don't have anything particularly good here this turn, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to victim of night their lone missionary, uh, attack with the Phyrexian Rager, play down Thorn of the Black Rose, um, and hopefully things will be okay, maybe. Oh, they make a okay, we'll make a one one spirit. That's that's fine. Um that's a weird card. It's a weird card that I haven't actually seen before. Now, to be fair, I haven't played against Tron in quite a while, so maybe it's a maybe it's a thing that's being used more, but not not too much to my knowledge. Uh, okay, they conceded. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> um, all right. So unfortunately, I don't think we'll be able to get another game in 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 about fourteen minutes at this point um but yeah so this is this is essentially like you had a good idea of um of how this deck worked no problem at all i love mert um i'll be i'll be back on again over the next um over the next couple of days um with more probably more popular streams in addition to some other formats like i've got a couple of budget options for pioneer and stuff as well um which i've been enjoying quite a bit um don't let don't let the the doomsayers and everything um sway you from that format by the way a lot of people saying like oh it's all full of combo decks and oh it's degenerate sure some of the best decks are combo related but like not a whole lot of people play them outside of leagues so like i wouldn't worry too much about it um but yeah um if you enjoy the uh the content here by all means um Follow me here or uh, over on Twitter as well. That's a volunteer there too. Um, but yes, this is uh, Mono Black Control. Um, this is the Jund of Popper. It wants to grind out um, and eventually pull ahead through a bit of card advantage and um, making sure that nothing stays alive for more than a turn with all of the removal in the world. Um, it definitely plays a hell of a lot more like a mid range deck than it does a control deck. Um, I think. I think it's like more to do with like the older archetypes of like mono black control where it was just removal and creatures that either replaced themselves or provided some sort of benefit on ETB. But um, yeah, it's it's very, very good. Uh, if you like playing mid-range strategies that, and you want to get into Magic Online, get this deck. Um, you won't be, you won't be sorry. The cost of this deck, by the way, the cost of this deck, the exact build as you see here on mtg goldfish is a whopping 12 ticks if you don't know what ticks are ticks are the currency that's used uh, on the magic online um system and uh, they roughly equate to one dollar is one tick um so you're looking at about 10 quid for this deck um not to mention if you look at the popper metagame list here uh, if we just click on online prices here you'll see Burn is an insanely good deck. In fact, is one of the most played decks at the moment. Uh, 19 ticks. 19 ticks. Uh, one of the more expensive ones, actually, Scred Fairies. Uh, it's basically an Is a Delver list, very similar to a Legacy one. Uh, 64 ticks. That's probably one of the more expensive decks in the format. Let me see if there's anything actually more expensive than that. Um, so far, I'm not seeing it. No, 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 no. Some are down as low as six ticks here for uh, for goblins, and yeah, nope. It's the most expen the most expensive deck that you can get on Magic Online 
is uh, is sixty four dollars for a popper. Um, and to be honest, it's a good deck, but there are some really sweet fun decks here. Um, I do agree entirely, Isla Mert, that combo decks uh, should be a valid archetype, and people do hate for sure. Um, but yeah, you can play you can play stuff like Mono Green Stompy. You can play stuff like Affinity. Affinity has two different builds right now. There is um, the usual one that uh, has the Frog Mites and the Mirror Enforcers and that kind of thing, and um then also has the atog fling in it or there's the other version which goes really really heavy into the atog fling and also runs like team of battle rage and all that kind of stuff as well which is quite interesting um you've got stuff like blue black control uh you have mono white heroic is well it kind of just does what it says in the tin uh elves is 100 percent a thing in fact elves is a really weird deck because it's got a very very low land count it has 13 lands um Speaking of very, very low land counts, another deck that I'm going to be trying over the next week or two is Five Color Walls combo, um, which is basically got 10 forests and then make all the mana off your creatures instead. 41 creatures. Um, I'll go further into that deck at a later point. But the idea is that there are loads and loads of different decks and loads of different archetypes. If there is a type of deck that you like to play and you want to get into Popper and see the 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 format equivalent um just message me or shoot me um a tweet over on twitter um or anytime on, i'm on stream just come on and chat like i'm happy to talk about popper all the time popper is probably uh, popper is easily one of my favorite formats easily um i've played with probably every deck in the format i'd say at this point that has been out in the last two years so um it's very very good very very good elves kind of is mono green storm you're right it's quite close to that i'd say um but that is it really that is the deck um that we were talking about there mono black control that's the deck uh it is very very good it's very very enjoyable it rewards knowledge of the format it rewards um tight play uh which you probably didn't see here but you know whatever <laughs> um there are a bunch of different ways in which you can build it if you go on to like i did there you go on to uh the pauper metagame here you scroll down a bit here's mono black control if you look down the sides here at all these different decks every single one of them is built differently some of them have witch's cottage in it which is quite cool um some of them use disfigure again like i said some use unearth some of some gets verdicts uh some use some use some oh what are they called again liliana specters um there's more yeah like there's there's a one that splashes red like this rakdos control um where you can use like garma anglers and stuff instead of gary um you run a little heavier on the discard side of it with like i said liliana specter um a cube gang shinobi and then raven's crimes and stuff as well which is quite sweet um i quite like that kind of build as well you can also go uh splashing white so that you can go into a more pestilence based build and all this kind of stuff there's loads of different ways you can take it but that is essentially it for this deck and that's it for myself here today um but again if you are not yet following please consider doing so if you really really enjoy it you can either become a patreon which the details are down below or over on my twitter and there's donation links there there's um the you can get a sub there as well if you want to you can do whatever you like um anything to support is a huge help but that is going to be it for myself uh if you want to chat more about it like i said chat to me over on twitter um but that is it this vod will be up on youtube tomorrow as well so if you missed any of this and want to check it from the start you can check it out on there youtube.com forward slash savant here as well but that is it for now so i will be back on stream on friday but until then everybody take it easy uh hope you enjoy popper and keep on janking.